<laughs> what up and welcome back to Born New Views. Nick here. Joey there. And today we are reacting to another... I almost said Born Reviews. Another <laughs> Mickey Flanagan. That's right. The man, the myth, the legend. For us, we've been out of town. It's been a few weeks since I reacted to him. And I'm ready for some more, baby. And you would pick this one. I just looked <laughs> at the title. Right now... Let's talk about sex, title. baby. Let's talk about you and me. So we are reacting to the clip, Mickey Talks About Sex. I'm very interested to hear what he has to say. So much so it's going to be educational. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can be aware, aware of our next uploaded videos. And let's get uncomfortable. <laughs> There's no one uncomfortable besides you. Yep. No one watching you our can't reaction. can't say no one. Listen. I'm uncomfortable. Is, is it, it must be me, I guess. I'm very comfortable. Men don't want to get pegged. Simple as that. See? Here we go. I'm going to talk about sex for a little while. Strapping. <laughs> Isn't it funny now? Sex, everyone's f***ing gone sex mad, haven't they? Every time I'm not... Are you having the best sex? Are you having the longest sex? Are you having the f***ing hardest sex? Woo! <laughs> I blame pornography. <laughs> Consumption of pornography. It's got it out of hand. You couldn't get it in the 70s. You couldn't get it. It was illegal. Men had to go to a dirty cinema, didn't they? They got a Mac and cut the pockets out of it. <laughs> and they used to have a pair of trousers that they cut the top bit off and just tied it above their knees. <laughs> and they were thinking he knows a lot about this, didn't he? But they no. <laughs> they were called the Dirty Mac Brigade and they'd go in the cinema, right, and put their hands in their pockets. They'd see like a manual tour or something, have a proper polish. <laughs> Give it to you in the street here, people. <laughs> and you get to the 80s. It's sadly it. much more common pornography because you had people sort of... We got the video recorder turned up, didn't it? And suddenly you could get a film. Every factory, every warehouse had a bit of a nonce in it. <laughs> Things you would reproduce them. In our factory, it was a geezer called Colin the Polisher. <laughs> and you come up and go, I've got some films, Mick, for the weekend. Got some films. They're blinding. They're from the continent. He only had three teeth, me. <laughs> mahogany, you and dark oak. And uh, <laughs> use him as a colour chart. Do you want the mahogany, you the dark oak? He was a proper nonce. Do you want a film for the weekend? <laughs> and what you did was, you got the film for the weekend, three quid, something like that, and you took it home, and you plied the wife with Martini the Bianco. <laughs> right? And then about half past 10, 11, you went, I've got a filming work, babe. I don't know if you fancy watching it. I'm not even one of them. Might be good, worth watching. You put the film on, suddenly you're watching a man with a huge donger go on for hours. <laughs> and you're thinking, this might have backfired a little bit. <laughs> this is not natural, babe, is it? The way that man's shaping up, I don't think it's very well. Let's cut to the present day. Pornography consumed all day long by people. Oh, Hardcore no. pornography. Horrible pornography. Aggressive pornography. It's reached the point where when teenagers have sex for the first time, they try and strangle each other. <laughs> Is this it? I thought it was going to be more fun than this. <laughs> and they call it puppy love. <laughs> Pregnancy is nothing new, is it? You know, it's oh, been in the news lately. Like, yeah. They want the teenager to abstain and things like that. But people, teenagers were still shagging each other back in the 70s, but they got married if they got someone pregnant. You met your mate down the pub and said, Oh, you know that Tracy. <laughs> you know, I told you, I'll f her. <laughs> She's having a baby. <laughs> you go, Oh, well, that's you finished then, isn't it? <laughs> Do you want a game of pool? <laughs> Lives in the balance. I like nudity indoors. I don't like public nudity. I've tried it. Me and my wife went on a little Greek holiday once and she oh, talked nice. me into going to the bleeding nudist beach. Now, there's a problem if you're a male from the UK. You've been covering your penis up for legal reasons all of your adult life. And suddenly, you're just walking about in front of people. 
And the penis is not having it. It goes, what the f are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're gonna get us nicked. <laughs> and it hides in the pubes. <laughs> Suddenly, you're standing there with a vagina. <laughs> this is Not everyone has that problem, pal. Because you can't do what you do after five aside or swimming, when most men give it a little tug and liven it up a little bit. <laughs> you just have to use the powers of concentration to get it somewhere between flaccid and lob on, somewhere right in the middle. <laughs> I'm laying there on the sunbed, I'm in bits. I'm, like, I'm just trying to maintain some sort of dignity. I looked at my wife, I said, this is the worst day of my life. I need a drink. I said, I'm going to that bar at the back. Do you think you have to put your clothes on? She said, don't be stupid, it's a nudist beach. I went bowling into the bar. No. You do have to put your clothes no. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Never has a lager taken so long to pour. <laughs> Slow realisation. Isn't that how it Everyone is? Everyone else has got their clothes on. Good up. Good up. So, it's creating problems with couples. I met an eminent sex therapist, right, as part of my latest Sky show, and I was talking to her about the consumption of pornography. She said it's causing big problems with couples, Mick. Big problems. She said we're having a major issue with pegging, right? Pegging, right, for those who don't know, is when the, uh, the female of the species, who is more deadly than the male, right, she puts on a strap-on dildo and she penetrates the man anally. Not annually, that's a completely different thing, right? <laughs> it just pays into it. So the women are seeing it and thinking, aye, aye, I fancy a bit of that. <laughs> but there's a lot of men who don't want to be pegged. <laughs> it's creating tension amongst couples, right? So I said to the sex therapist, as she's top of her game, she's, you know, she does TED Talks, she knows what she's talking about. I said, right, you've got a couple. The woman wants to peg, the man don't want to be pegged. What's your advice? She said, Michael, I tell him to try it at least once. I said, well, how does this help? So she said, it's good for the man, because the first time in his sexual life, he has to partake in an act that he's not particularly keen on, yet has to show some level of appreciation for. <laughs> for. <laughs> Sound familiar? Oh, the women in the world are like, yep. Yeah, it has to show some level of appreciation for. I thought, right, I'm getting it. Right on, sister. I said, but given that the dildo is rubberized and has no sensation, what's really going on here? She said, Michael, this is about control, power, but ultimately, revenge. <laughs> I said, revenge? She said, yes. I said, revenge for what? She said, I believe this is revenge for the facial. Right? <laughs> so I said, revenge for the facial. So she said, yes. She said, for many, many years, men were happy to ejaculate on the breasts. This was the holy grail. It was called a pearl necklace, right? But this, was what, this was their big aim. Uh, she said, but they're not happy now, unless the woman ends up looking like a plasterer's radio at the end of the session. <laughs> you know, she's got to be a current fan in the sun before anyone's had a good time. <laughs> and women are sick of it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, lads, is if at, if at some point in the not too distant future, you catch yourself over the kitchen table, Farting on a dishcloth. <laughs> while she tears into you. <laughs> you sort of bought it on yourself, didn't you, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, I thought I'd do that bit at the next Royal Variety performance. What do you think? <laughs> yeah? I won't be doing that again. They keep on asking me to do it. I'm not bowing and scraping in front of that big head. Fucking hell. <laughs> Here's a counter voice, royal family. F 
Craft a lot here, get a job. <laughs> get a job. Oh my mm. god, that's why he is mm. legendary. I mean, honestly, I know it's not your favorite topic to be Talk recorded about it in front of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have it posted mm -hmm. on the internet. I get mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But this is why he's the genius. Mm -hmm. The way he was able to build all of those those different jokes, different sets. Absolutely hilarious, but absolutely genius as well. Mm -hmm. So lads, mm -hmm. when you're sitting there, this is happening to you. You brought it on yourself. I almost lost it when he's talking about me on the nudist beach and he even said that I was trying to maintain my dignity. Dignity. I almost lost it. That was just Oh, I just I just can't imagine going in so far. <laughs> Love is vacant. Oh my gosh, I just I walked in. No. <laughs> Need your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying inside. I felt so uncomfortable. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, I felt for him. Oh my gosh. I, I would just die of mortification. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. No, no, no. Absolutely hilarious. I love how he has to like explain why <laughs> his junk reacted that way. <laughs> Let us know what you thought about our reaction to this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Goodbye.